ooh, I'm out of battery. But good morning. Is it hot enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see you. We, um, today's sermon is about prayer and Luke's um, record of the Lord's prayer and uh, in particular persistence in prayer. And we'll see what that means for us. I believe I don't have any other information about our worship service other than follow your bulletin. We begin by preparing our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness, <clears throat> and that is found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing in life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first lesson is from Genesis. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from me to do such a thing, far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous from the wicked with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I, who am but dust and ashes, suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again he spoke to him, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. second lesson is from Colossians, second chapter. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh 
in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are in bed with are, are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him the gospel of the Lord you may be seated I'd like to invite the children to come forward hey why don't you come and sit by me there you go Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. My grandson, August, who goes to this child care center, well, they teach him how to pray. When he was not even one years old, they were teaching him how to pray. Here's how they taught him. They taught him this little rhyme. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Fold them just like that. Do you know why they wanted him to fold his hands? Because they were going to pray. And why do we fold our hands? Well, <laughs> yes, we have learned that if we don't fold our hands, we'll go like this. We won't keep our hands to ourselves, so we fold our hands. Sometimes, and sometimes in the Bible, it talks about raising your hands up like that to pray. Or, if you go and see pictures or television or movies about uh, Jewish people praying at the wailing wall, 
they bob back and forth like this. Do you know why? why? They want not only their souls to be praying, they want to involve their entire body. So the position we take is not important, as important as praying. Do you know what praying is? A relationship with God, talking to him. Yes, were you going to say something? Oh, the sun's been around for 200 million years? Uh, it's going to turn into a supernova in 200 million years. Oh. Well, you know what? <laughs> That's long enough away we don't have to worry about it. But maybe we should pray about it. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God. We do worry. Even about the sun. Exploding. But we pray that you be with us. Help us to love you. And be loved by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Time is running out. Only 200 million years left. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we're going to talk about prayer, persistence in prayer. And let me share with you, again, my favorite story about prayer, answered prayer. Everybody remember the story of Pacific Garden Mission? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you it again. My favorite story about prayer. Pacific Garden Mission was a mission that was started in the 1800s, the late 1800s, in Chicago. It was going to be a mission, in particular, for street people, homeless people. And they, uh, a, a colonel and his wife, Sarah, uh, rented this space. It used to be a beer garden. And they rented the space for a month. That's all the money they had, one month. And they thought by the end of the month, they're going to have enough money to pay rent for another month. Well, after the month, as the end of the month started coming, they started praying at the beginning of the month that God would provide rent. It never came. The first week, the second week, they started praying more fervently. The money never came. The third week, they prayed more fervently, fervently yet. Finally, the last day of the month, the, before the last day of the month, they had an all-nighter and prayed all night long. In the morning, still no money. But the colonel looks out on the lawn and he sees a, lot, a bunch of white spots on the lawn. And he goes out and looks, and they're mushrooms. So he walks down to a five-star hotel, which was a few blocks away, with a few samples of these mushrooms, and he showed them to the chef, and the chef says, I will buy as many as you can give me I'm going to come and harvest them myself. Well, after he was done harvesting the first batch, it was enough to pay the rent. 
Does God answer prayer? And look at how persistent they were, down on their knees praying. In fact, the chef kept coming back, and they had enough for three months. And that kept the Pacific Garden Mission going. By the way, the name of the beer garden was Pacific Beer Garden. And they just removed the beer and put Pacific Garden Mission. It's still operating. It's moved a few times. And they've had a radio program called Unshackled about stories of people that have been helped by that mission. Well, today we're talking about prayer. The purpose of prayer, and Jesus makes that very clear, the purpose of prayer is to establish our relationship with God, that God desires a relationship and cares for us deeply. Starting with the first word, Father. Luke says, Father. A few years ago, half a dozen of us men went to the men's Lutheran Men in Mission conference. I think it was in uh, Nashville. And in one of the meetings, the person on stage called upon a pastor, an associate pastor from Lutheran Church of Hope in West Des Moines, Iowa. Now, Lutheran Church of Hope is one of those eight or 10,000 member congregations, maybe even bigger. And this associate pastor was called upon to pray, and he began his prayer by saying, Daddy. He didn't start like everyone else seems to start with Father. He started with Daddy. And every time he referred to God, it was Daddy, Daddy. Afterwards, we talked about it, and we all go, Ooh, I was really uncomfortable with that. He seems to be trivializing our relationship with God, not calling God Father. Well, guess what? The Greek word that you, Luke uses happens to be Abba. Abba is daddy. It shouldn't, or dad. It, it shouldn't necessarily be translated the more formal father. It should be daddy. Luke is trying to show us that we are to have a close relationship with God Almighty just as you would with your daddy, your mommy, those caregivers in your life. Daddy. Promises us daily bread. By the way, they say people under 60, most people in the United States under 60 have not experienced prayer except table grace and when an officiant prays at some meeting. It's a lot it's saying something about our younger people. Don't pray. And then they say when we do pray, we think we are so busy in our society. We're too busy to pray, so we pray on the fly, a little bit like our... Um, social media accounts or Twitter accounts and our messenger accounts, we pray on the fly in just short little quips as we're driving, walking. God wants us to pray often. I don't want to say that. And he wants us to develop a strong relationship with him. And that's why we begin with Abba. He promises us daily bread. Daily bread... It, it's, it's meant not merely to be food only, but everything we need from day to day, as Martin Luther would say. I'll tell you a story about Diane Stark. Diane Stark was raised a very strict Christian. She uh, read her Bible every day, prayed every day, went to church every time the doors were open. Her father 
was a strict Christian and a strict disciplinarian. Everything was great. She had a great childhood, she thought, until her father, was, we, they, they found out her father had betrayed the marriage commitment he had made to her mother. Not only betrayed his mother, but the entire family felt betrayed. A messy divorce ensued, and the entire family, Diane says, seemed to break apart. She was now going off to college, and she thought, well, if that's the kind of God I'm praying to, who doesn't even care about my family, what's the use? She stopped going to church, stopped reading her Bible. Sunday mornings were her, day, were her time to sleep in. Till one day, she went off, she got married and had some children, and her nine-year-old son, Jason, came to her one day holding a Bible, and he says, Mom, whose Bible is this? And she says, Jason, it's my Bible. She said, I used to read it every day. And he said, you don't anymore? And she says, no. And he said, why don't you? Don't you believe in God? And for the first time, she thought back on her life and her broken family and all the hurt that she had held. And she says, well, I, no, no, I, I believe in God. And he said, Mom, what are some of your favorite Bible verses? And she took the Bible and started paging through it, and he said, um, well, how about this? All things are possible for God. All things work together, she kept paging, for good for those who love God. And she said, here's another. I can all, do all things through him who strengthens me. I said, Mom, can I have your Bible? I want to write those verses down. So he left, wrote them down, and he came back and he said, Mom, I, I found something interesting about those three Bible verses you recited. They all have one thing in common. And she said, what is it? She said, he said, well, you actually underlined, double underlined, two words in each of those verses. All things. And at that moment, her heart broke open, broke open to the grace of God. And she realized that God was at work in her life in all things. Not merely the good things, but all things. Her father's betrayal, her family's breakup, her abandonment of God. God was at work in all things. And it was a life-changing moment for her. The mercy of God filled her, and her relationship with God came back. So God was involved in all things. Well, that's daily bread. God is there in all things in our lives. There's nothing so small that God doesn't care about. We should pray. And there's nothing so large, so large, that God and you can't make it through it together. We should pray about it. Third thing in this prayer, forgiveness. We are to be a forgiving people. The suggestion is that those people who cannot, who do not believe they need to be forgiven, uh, studies have indicated that they have a hard time forgiving other people. I'm right. They're wrong. If you can't forgive, you often cannot forgive others. The other um, thing they find is that those that 
do not think they need forgiveness, have a very difficult time in life trying to live up to the, their own ego sense of perfection. Well, Diane Stark, when her son, she was so thankful for her son. She prayed and thanked God for her son, finding her Bible and talking to her about it. And she realized when she looked back on her life that she was so imperfect, that she had abandoned God. And it's in looking at her own life and realizing her own need for mercy that all of a sudden her heart was opened up to forgive her own father. We are to be people of forgiveness, relationship, relationship with God who forgives us, relationship with other people. Finally, we have this parable. In, uh, by the way, parallels are not always a one-for-one -one relationship analogy. For instance, if we try to interpret this as an analogy that the friend sleeping is God, then it becomes rather silly. And were the prayers banging on the door now, what Jesus wants us to see that if you pray often, you pray persistently to a friend. See, the man didn't go to some stranger and ask for bread in the night. If he went to a stranger, the stranger might say, Walmart is open 24 hours. He went to a friend and asked. This parable says we are to go to a friend, God, who has befriended us in Christ, forgiven us in Christ, loves us and wants that relationship with us, wants to be asked and talked to persistently. And God, who is our friend, answers. What a friend we have an Almighty God. He simply says, ask, pray, persistent, persistently, always. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator and earth. Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, through diverse cultures and countries, your spirit weaves us together as one church. Help us all, your disciples, to ask for the things we need, confident you hear us, Lord, in your mercy. Call us to notice places and people you created, but we often forget. For busy places, for those working in the noon heat, in the silence of the night, and in the care of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Bring peace where strife is found. We pray for race relations in our country and those places suffering from police killings and from police officers being slain. Dallas, Baton Rouge, Kansas City, and other places, and where terrorist, terror strikes, Afghanistan, Germany, Orlando. Empower leaders and organizations to find solutions through persistence and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protecting God, sustain police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and others who attend to public safety. Uphold those who are sick, injured, or who will die this day. We pray especially for Meredith Adams, Leo Biella, Drew Bowman, Carolyn Callan, Larry Carlson, Terry Carlson, Pam Cole, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Sandy Drake, Jeff Dykeman, Jeff Hempfill, Mark Henson, David Jones, Alan Kamens, Tina Law, Ellen Lassant, Carol Lohmeyer, Chris Marquardt, Carolyn Nyes, and Rod Thurman. Are there any others? You are the God of our salvation. You have enabled us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Hold in your eternal light those who have died, especially Benita Stamper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Seek after us wherever we are found in these summer months. Grant safety to, the, to those who travel, Sabbath rest to those who vacation, and perseverance to those who have no leisure time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the Lord is always upon you. You will remain with us. Throw us the good things that you will. Let us be in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
Take it to the Lord in prayer. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite you to um, read your messenger. There's a sign-up sheet for a potluck next Sunday. And uh, you notice the announcement, if you still wanted to go to Lutheran night at the ball game, you still have an opportunity. And you can read about that in the messenger. I, I think that's all I needed to say. Oh, don't forget, September 10th is our big uh, God's Work Our Hands. Yes, God's Work Our Hands, uh, and outreach to help our neighborhood um, do some cleanup. I can see the dumpsters full now. Um, I'm here because on Wednesday is Dan's birthday. Oh, really? Yeah, it's on the Wednesday. I thought you were going to be out of town. I am. But because this is kind of a milestone birthday, he's going to be 65. Oh, ouch. <laughs> I did bring a cake, and I would like you to come celebrate in the fellowship hall. And I do think it might be a bad sign, but it looks like you forgot your glasses. They're on my desk. I think I did pretty well without my glasses. <laughs> Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship. May Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.